Hello, I'm Glenn McIntosh, the weight psych. And I'm Lindy Cohen, the nude nutritionist. And together we're going to answer your question on combining intuitive eating with nutritious eating. Welcome to Thursday Therapy guys where I answer your questions on the psychology of eating, movement, weight and body image every two weeks. Today's question is a really interesting one on how to improve your eating without becoming diety. Nicole asks, as a yo-yo dieter for over 30 years, I know diets don't work and it feels so much better to be eating without that strict mentality. But how do I eat healthier foods without falling back into the diet mindset of good versus bad foods? Nicole, this is a really great question. I see so many people who stop dieting and they lose all of the craziness around food, the compulsions, the obsession about food, the binging just dies right down. And they tend to feel a bit more accepting about their bodies, a bit less critical, a bit less worried about what's going on on the scales, which is really, really cool. And I think that's the main thing. But for a lot of people, they kind of feel like this space is a bit of a middle ground and they know that they can actually eat a fair bit more nutritiously. So I'm going to give you my few best thoughts on how to get there and then I'm going to refer you out this time to Lindy Cohen who is just the perfect person to speak to about this and she's going to help us take that journey just a little bit further. The first thing that I want you to do is to focus on how you feel after making food choices. We've talked about this in a previous Thursday therapy. Intuitive eaters have this ability to think five or 10 minutes, half an hour, two hours beyond the eating experience and pair that eating choice with how they're going to feel afterwards. Now, some people do this naturally, but thankfully research does show that it is a skill like sewing, like riding a bike, it can be really learned by anyone with practice. And what happens is if we take away the food rules and just focus on how you feel, naturally you're gonna to gravitate towards the more nutritious foods which make us feel better and away from the less nutritious foods which don't make us feel so great, especially if we eat them regularly or in big amounts. And what will happen is over thousands and thousands of pairings, you'll start to develop this real intuition, this real want to eat well, which is really cool. The second thing I want you to think about is using your transferable skills. I talk to a lot of my clients about having a long dieting career and having what we call a dieting career change into a more intuitive way of eating. But just because you're changing your perspective doesn't mean you need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You actually have a lot of transferable skills that you can bring with you just with a different intention. A good example of this might be meal planning. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, people, you know, plan out their meals when they're on a diet and you can plan out your meals without dieting just with a different intention. I was uh, talking with a client this week who came in and they would joined a gym program and they had a, a very kind of rigid weight focused uh, meal plan. And we just, I probably shouldn't say this, this is gonna be a lot of dietitians watching. We just took a, a, you know, a days of the week and a, a five meals a day, and she just changed it to what she would kind of like and give her a bit of structure. So that same thing, a meal plan, one that was given to her that was prescriptive, that was rigid and that was weight focused versus the one that we created, which was a bit more flexible, a bit more enjoyable and focused on just good nutrition and overall health, that same skill can be applied in very, very different ways. 
The more I do intuitive eating with people, the more I realize that it's not so much exactly about what you're doing, but about the intention behind it. So if you can use your transferable skills for good, not evil, then bring them along for the ride in developing your new non-dieting career. A lovely idea that one of my mentors, Dr. Rick Korsman talks about, is about thinking about intuition and nutrition as two oars in the same boat. If we just use our nutritional principles, we tend to get a bit diety and kind of go around in circles. And similarly, especially if we haven't been eating very well, if we just use our intuition, we tend to go around in circles the other way. So it's about thinking about them as complementary and working together to get you where you need to go. Lindy Cohen, the nude nutritionist, is the perfect person to speak to about this. So we're gonna fly down to Sydney to go and see her right now. Welcome. Ah, thank you for having me. How was your flight? It was really, really good. <laughs> Guys, for those of you who have been living under a rock, this is Lindy Cohen, the nude nutritionist. Lindy, you might have seen her on Channel 9's Today. You're the Today Dietitian, which is really cool. And she's also a Jamie Oliver's Food Revolution Ambassador, which is also super cool. For me though, the coolest thing is that Lindy, I know that you really get non-dieting. And I think that's what we're here to talk about today, this idea of, okay, I kind of get intuitive eating principles, but a lot of people actually then have that next question of, well, what do I actually eat? And that's where we're gonna go. But before we go there, you have to tell me about the nude nutritionist. Where does this come from? I love it, I love it. It's not false advertising, I promise. It's false advertising. <laughs> The nude nutritionist for me was something I created because there's so many rules and regulations when it comes to healthy eating, so many pretenses and so many things that we feel like we're allowed to eat or we're not allowed to eat. So for me, the nude, nude nutritionist was all about stripping that back and getting back to basics and the stuff that really matters so you can eat healthily without the stress and the anxiety around it. Because it all gets a bit crazy, doesn't it? Uh, it gets so confusing and I think we, we have so much nutrition information and we're not quite sure what to do with it. Totally. And that's why I think you're the perfect person to answer this Thursday therapy question because we get a lot of people who want to eat a bit better but don't want to start to get back into that crazy sort of rule-based restrictive mentality. So that's what we're going to talk about. I want to show you how. All right. So guys, the first thing I want to talk to you about is adding, not subtracting. When you think of healthy eating, you always think of a list of forbidden foods, things you're not allowed to eat. And what happens when you tell a toddler they can't do something? You just want to do it more. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly the same with food. So when you focus on what you can't have, it's going to be what you want to eat. So instead, start thinking about what to add in your diet. And naturally, this is called crowding. You're going to crowd out the less healthy options by filling up on all of the good stuff. Naturally, it's going to feel easier to be healthy and you're not going to feel stressed doing it. And that's a nice positive focus, isn't it? You know, psychologists would say even women can only really fully concentrate on one thing at a time. And if we're just filling your brain with thoughts of, you know, positive, nutritious food that you like eating, the other stuff just kind of has no room. Exactly. It's so simple, but yeah. it seriously works. Very cool. So the second thing you can do is create a healthy environment. They say you become like the people you spend the most time with and naturally you eat the foods that you surround yourself with. So if you create a healthy environment, you're going to be setting yourself up for success. You don't need to rely on your willpower to make those healthier choices because when you get home from work and you're starving, you open the fridge and there's heaps of healthy options that you actually want to eat. So on the weekends, do some meal prepping, make some a big pot of soup, um, make sure you've always got yummy fresh fruit that you want to eat in your fridge so that you can actually be excited about the food you eat and it's right there for you. It's such a great idea because you know you mentioned willpower and it is this kind of finite resource that we have to sort of spread over every area of our life and I hear people it's a perfect example like I've just dealt with the kids, dealt with the husband, dealt with work, and I get to the end of the day and it just it's just so much harder to make that choice. But if you've got the environment set up for you to do it in a kind of a low willpower way, it's what I'm getting from you is that healthy eating doesn't have to be really hard. Exactly, it doesn't have to be complicated. You just gotta have a few strategies that make it much easier to go for those healthy options so you feel good. Very cool. Yeah. 
And guys, the last thing I wanna talk about is making healthy food enjoyable. So often when we get nutrition advice, we're always told to take out this food and take out this food. And so we're left with a plate of poached chicken and some broccoli, which is so boring. Exciting, no one wants to eat that. So my advice to you is, is eat the foods that you actually wanna eat. So have things like feta in your salad, mm -hmm. add a handful of nuts, make sure you drizzle over some beautiful salad dressing on that because when healthy food tastes good, you're actually gonna to wanna to eat it. And then it doesn't feel like a chore and it's so much simpler. And that's when you don't have any willpower. It's like you just want to eat this. There's no internal battle. So Lindy, let me get this straight for everyone out there because I don't think people really understand this idea of allowing and giving permission. You're giving permission for people to eat nutritiously but make the food fun for them. Exactly, I mean, there are no bad foods. It's just focusing on those foods that actually really taste good. Because when you ask your body what food it wants to eat, it's naturally gonna feel good when you're eating all those healthy, nutritious options. So you just gotta give yourself permission to go, I'm allowed to eat these foods. Sounds, it's free. Sounds delicious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Lindy, thank you so much for those tips. Guys, how simple is that? You know, you've just made these, what is it for a lot of us, a bit of a complex minefield, really, really simple. I know it sounds really simple and it actually is, but the thing is about implementing it, it's really where the money's at. Yeah, so give it a go, guys. And guys, while we are giving things a go, I really want you to join Lindy's newsletter. We're gonna provide links to the newsletter. Guys, as you would know, there's a, a lot that we wouldn't recommend working in the non-dieting space, but Lindy is someone who really gets it. And you know, following your work for ages, Lindy, and also knowing about your online programs like you have a program for non-dieting overcoming emotional eating body acceptance we have three different programs for the same thing there is so much crossover between what we do and guys you know in our programs Lindy, we don't provide any nutrition education it's all about the principles and we always get this question okay but what do i eat so in the work we do with dietitians in our practice we have great non-dieting dietitians up in brisbane and and people have a really different feel when they come back they're like wow that was not like any other dietitian session I've ever had. And I'm so excited because now we can have that with you online. So guys, I really want you to, to join Lindy's newsletter so you can find out about what she's doing and her programs because it really is a way to, to bring that next step into, okay, now I've got the principles, now let's start to apply them without undermining any of the great work we've done so far. And Glenn, I have to say you are one of my favorite psychologists. I think the world of you as and I just think there's so much co crossover here. So much crossover. That we make, it makes magic, really. It's like dietitians and psychologists unite. Unite! <laughs> All right, cool, guys. Thank you for being with us. And Lindy, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. And you know what? If you haven't already, what are you doing? Subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you in a couple of weeks for another Thursday therapy. <laughs>